people let us look at sudden hearing loss so it is defined as 30 decibel or more of yes of hearing loss okay over three contiguous frequencies so there are three frequencies let us say 125 so many frequencies you know no till 8000 frequency they will check in audiometry right so basically three continuous frequencies there's a drop okay so there is a drop of 30 decibels of more of 30 decibels or more of hearing loss over three contiguous frequencies within a period of 3 days or less so that becomes sudden hearing loss so how many people understood exact thing what sudden hearing loss is here it's very specific they are saying three continuous frequencies there is a loss of greater than or equal to 30 decibels and this thing is occurring uh in a period of 3 days or less right before that he was absolutely right all right so that will become sudden hearing loss okay so if you have seen pure tone audiometry the graphs and all you will understand so basically let us say you have plotted the frequencies here and you have plotted the decibels here so the threshold itself like uh, it has to be here here and here it will become this this and this for three continuous frequencies you can see there's a drop of 30 decibel or more so that becomes sudden hearing loss and that to the time is important in, with this all this happens within a period of 3 days or less So why does this happen? So now let us look at sudden hearing loss causes. There can be infection, trauma, vascular reasons, otologic like uh, something to do with the ear, toxic right, so, like some ototoxic drugs etc. Neoplastic conditions, miscellaneous, psychogenic. Let us see these. Okay, let us look at each of these causes. Why exactly sudden hearing loss happens? So look at infections. Like mumps, herpes zoster, meningitis, encephalitis, encephalitis, syphilis, otitis media. So the middle ear infection, and they have mentioned some organisms here. Middle ear infection, right? Otitis media. The so, organisms specifically mentioned are uh, herpes, syphilis. Uh, syphilis is the disease. Okay, only herpes. Other than that, what and all they have mentioned? Mumps. Mumps. herpes zoster meningitis encephalitis syphilis otitis media okay so all of them then let's move on to trauma trauma like head injury ear surgeries itself noise trauma you have seen noise trauma right barrow trauma spontaneous rupture of the cochlear membranes all these are trauma so in the cochlea some membranes are getting ruptured right then coming to vascular vascular they can be hemorrhage right hemorrhage or let us say this is the labyrinthine artery or this is the cochlear artery there can be an emboli right thrombosis emboli of these arteries the labyrinthine or the cochlear artery and there can be vasospasm of these arteries right vasospasm so obviously there is no proper blood flow here so uh, all this can be associated even with diabetes hypertension right polycythemia macroglobinemia sickle cell trait so diabetes hypertension standard you will write for everything and there can be sickle it can be associated with sickle cell trait where the rbcs will be sickle shaped so obviously vascular pro disturbances will occur in those so what will happen there is no proper blood flow right because of sickle cell trait etc now coming to the ear itself they are talking uh, they are calling this as otologic like um, meniere's disease guys cogan's syndrome large vestibular aqueduct okay so what and all they talking about meniere's disease cogan syndrome and large vestibular aqueduct you know what meniere's disease is meniere's disease m e n i e r e meniere's disease do you know what it is so basically it is nothing but some problem with the inner ear right guys and it will cause vertigo right dizziness you feel like as though you're spinning and there can be tinnitus etc a lot of other things can be there so now let us go to toxic so toxic basically you have seen ototoxic drugs insecticides can lead to sudden hearing loss ototoxic drugs video hope you have already seen then coming to neoplastic conditions like uh, acoustic neuroma metastasis in cerebropontine angle right lot of uh, metastasis happening here carcinomatous neuropathy 
Now, miscellaneous condition, guys, we have reached the miscellaneous causes for sudden hearing loss. What are we discussing? Miscellaneous conditions will be multiple sclerosis, hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism. So, that person can't hear. Less thyroid, sudden hearing loss. And lastly, the, the in miscellaneous, they are also talking about sarcoidosis. Basically, sarcoidosis is basically inflammatory cells being accumulated. Okay, nothing specific there. It can affect a lot of things. Then, guys, uh, let us move on to psychogenic. So, this is something to do with the uh, nothing physical it is. Okay, it is a psychological thing. It might happen. So, guys, we are done with the causes, right? Etiology of sudden hearing loss. Did you understand the, the etiology of sudden hearing loss? Come on, summarize. What and all did you see in uh, sudden hearing loss? Why on why and all can it happen? Infection, trauma, yes. Infection, trauma. What else did you see? Infection, trauma. Well, let us see what and all you remember. Uh, psychogenic, then uh, some toxicity, some toxic drugs, ear itself, minor's disease. Then, then what else did you see? Come on, try to recollect. Vascular, yes, very good. Vascular, neoplastic conditions, very good. Miscellaneous, you saw multiple sclerosis, sarcoidosis, hypothyroidism, very good. So, all these are going to be the causes of sudden hearing loss. Now, let us move on to the management of sudden hearing loss. So, how will you manage it? So, basically, to summarize very quickly, you will tell the person to take bed rest, some steroid therapy, inhalation of carbogen that is 5% carbon dioxide and 95% oxygen. You will give some vasodilated drugs so that the blood flow will be better. Right? Molecular, uh, a low molecular weight dextran can be given. Right? So, this uh, decreases the blood viscosity. So, the blood will become less viscous. So, it will flow better. Right? But this uh, you cannot do always. There are some contradictions, contraindications for these. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Uh, it raises the concentration of oxygen in labyrinthine fluids and improves the cochlear function. Okay. So, basically management of sudden hearing loss. So, first of all, you should know the etiologies. You take the detailed history of the person. You do physical examination and lab investigations like audiometry, vestibular test, imaging studies of temporal bone. Then you can check the sedimentation rate. You can check for syphilis, diabetes, hypothyroidism. Um, you can check for blood disorders like sickle cell trait, etc. Right? Lipid uh, profiles, you can see how they are. Right? Some cases may require exploratory tympanometry where perilim fistula can be uh, is strongly suspected. Then you can check that. Okay. So, uh, treatment is only uh, when you don't know the cause, right? Then the treatment is empirical where you will give bed rest, steroid therapy, carpogen, vasodilated drugs, uh, low molecular dextran, hyperbaric oxygen. So, basically first you will find the etiology. Find etiology and treat that, right? So, first treat the cause. So, how will you find the etiology? You will do, uh, take the history of the patient, do physical examination, examination lab investigations, right? Etc. So, that is the management. Now, let us move on to treatment. Oh, so, this was the treatment. Same thing, steroids, inhalation of carbogen, hyperbaric oxygen. We already saw this. Prognosis, guys, that means uh, recovery or how does the disease progress? Will they be able to recover? Fortunately, half of the patients, they will recover spontaneously within 15 days, okay? Half patients, half, okay, let's say 50%. 50% recover in 15 days, okay? But if they take longer, okay, if they, after one month, the chances of recovery are poor, okay? After one month, chance of recovery poor okay so about half of the patient uh, who suffer from these kind of idiopathic sensory neural uh, hearing loss that is so they're calling it now as snhl they're saying it is sensory neural hearing loss is it okay so basically the patients who have this idiopathic sensory neural hearing loss they will recover spontaneously within 15 days if it is idiopathic there's no specific vascular disorder or etc hypothyroidism, etc. So, those people will recover within 15 days. Okay. Uh, after one month, the chance of recovery is poor. Did you understand the prognosis, guys? Okay. Severe hearing loss that is associated with vertigo have poorer prognosis. So, if it is severe hearing loss and that is associated with vertigo, these people will have poor prognosis. Okay. Younger patients who are uh, less than 40 
and uh, who have very little not much of loss they will have good prognosis so obviously if they have very little uh, if they have a moderate loss and if they are young less than 40 they have good prognosis okay so that was about prognosis so in this video we looked at uh, sudden hearing loss they are also calling it as snhl that is sensory neural hearing loss but i am thinking this should be sudden so it should be sudden snhl sudden snhl so it should be sudden sensory neural hearing loss sudden snhl this makes more sense now right so we have understood what and all here today we have seen how to define it what are the causes what is the management and treatment and how what the prognosis of this is okay so that's all for now in sudden hearing loss see you bye bye Thank you.